Hello, and welcome to Lecture 3 of the Momentum Unit in Phys 1104. And here we are, three lectures into the unit on momentum, and we're still not even going to get to the idea of momentum itself, because the idea of a system is just so important, we really kind of need a whole lecture for it. It's not only going to be important for this unit, it's going to be important to all the rest of the units in the course. The idea of a system is something that we're going to use over and over again through the rest of the course. It's a very powerful idea, and at the same time reasonably simple. The idea is just that you divide everything into two categories. The things that you're interested in and are going to think about, and everything else. So take this pair of carts that's about to collide. Well, there are all sorts of other things going on around them. For example, just off the screen is me, because I set the carts in motion. But at this moment, when they're about to collide, I'm not important. I'm no longer interacting with the carts, and so we can ignore me if we're thinking about the collision. Similarly, if we believe the interaction between the carts and the track is weak, we might wish to ignore the track. So it would be reasonable then to divide the world into the world inside a boundary, which will just include the carts, and the world outside the boundary, which is everything else. We call the part of the world that we're interested in the system. And it's bounded by some boundary that we have made, so we would call that the system boundary. And then there's everything else, and everything else we refer to as the environment. Now, our choice of system is very much a choice, and we may make that choice in different ways. With experience, you sometimes realize that there are choices of systems that make solving a problem easier. But there's no choice of system that is either right or wrong. There's, there are simply convenient choices and less convenient choices. So the system including just the two carts is certainly a choice, but there's nothing preventing us from considering a system containing, say, just one cart. So far I've been a little bit vague, so it's time for me to be very specific about how one can define systems in general, and more specifically how we're going to define them in this course. So you could define a system to simply be a list of objects. So for example, in a cart collision, you might define it as the two carts. But you might also define a system to be a region of space. Again, analyzing a cart collision, you might decide to define your system as the region just above the surface of the track, which would normally contain the carts. You can define a system as the contents of a container even a container that moves around and changes size like a balloon. And there are many other ways to define a system as well. However, we're going to keep things simple. In this course, we are always going to define a system as a list of objects, never a region of space or the contents of a container. In particular, the reason for this is that we don't want to ever allow objects to enter or leave our systems. It's not that there's anything wrong with allowing objects to enter or leave a system. However, it does introduce a lot of complications that we are not ready to deal with in this course. You'll probably do it in other courses, though. So in particular, because there's no matter ever going across our system boundary, the total inertia of our system will always be constant. So it's a good idea when starting to work on a problem to think about what system might be appropriate. Perhaps we're thinking about a person throwing a ball up into the air. Well, you might be primarily interested in just the behavior of the ball itself, and so maybe you don't really want to think about the person because you want to think about after the ball has left the person's hand. But perhaps you are concerned with gravity because the ball is going to move under the influence of gravity, and so 
maybe you might realize that gravity is something that the Earth is doing to the ball. It's an interaction between the ball and the Earth, and so maybe you should include the Earth in your system and exclude the person. So you would simply draw a diagram and draw your dotted line around the ball and the Earth. On the other hand, you might be primarily interested in the interaction between the person and the ball during the act of throwing the ball, and so you would choose your system, maybe, to exclude the Earth and include the person and the ball. Similarly, you might be thinking about a light connected to a battery, and the light is shining, and maybe you're just concerned about what's going on in the battery and how you know the chemical reactions are happening and so on and so forth and so maybe you want your system to be just the battery on the other hand perhaps you want to think about how those chemical reactions are producing an electrical current that's going through the light bulb and producing the light and you want to think about that light leaving your system and so you would include perhaps the bulb as well. Let's check your understanding of these ideas. So scallops are bivalve mollusks, sort of like clams and mussels, but totally unlike clams and mussels, scallops can swim. They do that by sucking water in at the front and then they squirt the water out the back of their shell. And so they're basically like little underwater living ramjets. Anyway, so I am showing a diagram here of a scallop swimming and three instants. There's an instant where its shell is closed and there's some mass of water out in front of it and it opens that up and sucks that water in and then it clamps its shell shut and shoots the water out the back. And I want you to tell me from my diagram what I have defined as my system.